Limit switches are a simple and common method used to restrict mechanical movement used a lot in industrial machinery and so on but also of value on model railways. We don't have to worry so much about overrun when we're using stepper motors or servos because we can use electronic means to, to limit the movement in either direction. Although they still have a place even there as a fail-safe mechanism. On model railways, the movement can be either rotational or it can be linear depending on the application. Let's look at a few examples. We may wish to have a water crane that rotates, but maybe only 90 degrees. Similarly, uh, a lifting crane for goods would have a restricted arc of movement. And then there's a sector plate. In the example here, we have a sector plate that only has two positions. Or it could be a turntable. But apart from rotational limitation, we may want to limit linear movement. You can see a number of examples here. We have the road roller that we use on our back and forth layout. We have the canal barge that we have on our back and forth layout. We have traversers. We have the main shaft and the, the main uh, wagons that traverse up and down a, a track. In these, we may want to fit limit switches to prevent overrun, where the moving part goes beyond its intended limits, because it can either damage whatever it's uh, pushing against, or it may simply uh, hit, can't move any further, and overheats the motor. If the DC motor is part of some more elaborate electronic setup, where there are microprocessors, PICs or, or uh, nanos or whatever involved, then they can use detectors to, to spot when they've come to the limits of mechanical movement and actually switch the motor off. But if we don't have that, all we want to do is have a simple switch. Throw the switch one way, you get mechanical movement one way. Throw the switch the other way, mechanical movement in the opposite direction. Then we haven't got the electronic means to do it and that's where limit switches come in. There's an example of a DC motor with a rack and pinion which moves that larger part. You can see it's 13 centimetres across so you get quite a bit of movement in either direction simply by reversing the polarity on the DC motor. How we control that? Well normally we would use a double pole double throw switch. So you have the voltage coming in and the voltage coming out. And the polarity of the output voltage depends which way you've thrown the switch. You've all probably come across that already. So there it's there. You get a double pole, double throw switch you wire across there, take your input and then at the top you have the output that goes to your DC motor such that when you power up in one direction you get rotation in one direction and you'll get movement in one direction. But if you reverse 
the in, the switch. Still got the same polarity down here, but the contacts are not going to go from there and there. They're going to go to the bottom too. The effect is to, to reverse the polarity coming out of the switch, and therefore the motor will go in the other direction. And you get mechanical movement in the other direction. That's fine, but doesn't take care of the problem about overrun. And that's where we can look at the idea of limit switches. This example are using two micro switches, one at either end, so that when the mechanical part comes to its extreme left, it'll push the micro switch and make or break contact and the same in this direction here. So we have a detector at either end of the mechanical movement that you require. So we can wire it this way. So we now have a switch, a limit switch at either end of the travel. And depending how far apart they are, depends how much travel you get. Now, if I put power on in one direction, the motor wants to move as before. We get the mechanical movement as before. But this time, when it gets to the end, it breaks the switch. The limit switch is now open circuit and the motor stops. Ideal, except when we reverse the polarity by throwing the switch, nothing happens because there'll be no circuit to complete as long as the micro switch is kept open circuit. And you can't remake the contact until you have moved whatever's pushing the micro switch. So we have a chicken and egg situation. And the way around it is to fit diodes across each micro switch. And that's it. Added two components onto the limit switches and we're good to go. Now, if I put on the polarity in that direction, we get physical movement in that direction, and once again, we break the circuit. Current can't flow. It can't flow through the, the switch because you've got an open circuit, and it can't flow through the diode because we've got it reverse biased. So nothing can happen. However, when we reverse the polarity by throwing the switch, the motor will go in the opposite direction, we'll get movement in the opposite direction because we've now got a, a circuit coming up through the, the diode that's no longer reverse biased, it's forward biased, allowing current to flow and the motor can turn and the, the mechanical part will move across until it hits the other limit switch. And the same will happen, of course, when we, we come to this end. This will break, that will be reverse biased until once again change the polarity here. Like that. We have the contact made here now, but we've broken it at this end. But this end is reverse biased. So once again, there'll be no movement until you reverse the polarity to make a complete circuit through the diode that is now forward biased. So it works. There's a mock-up of that same piece of mechanical equipment here. The rack and pinion, there's a DC motor, little battery, my double pull, double throw switch, 
and the two small micro switches here and here acting as limit switches and diodes across them. That's the circuit there. Bit clearer because we can see which way around the diodes are positioned. Also note that we've used the two outer pins of the micro switches because we want to have it that when you push against them you break the circuit here. It's a changeover switch in the micro switch. We only want to use the two contacts that break the circuit. And finally, that's what it looks like.